Welcome to the Enter the Mind podcast. The most real talk, no nonsense podcast on the empowering of the mind. Why enter the mind? Because it's that room in your house that's been there all along that you've never gone into. Well, now it's time to enter with two mind coaches dedicated to self-help and the thriving of all human beings. I'm Kira Carlin. And I'm Robert Nelson. Welcome Welcome to to Enter Enter the the Mind. Mind. In this week's episode, we'll be talking about self-evolution, breaking up with your old self, and how to achieve personal growth. So, Kira, how are you doing this week? I'm doing extremely, extremely freaking well. How are you? Wow. Well, I think that warrants a little bit more of an explanation of what makes you doing so well. (sighs) A boundary had been crossed, and I put my goddamn foot down, and I feel fucking good about it. (laughs) All right. Props to uh, firm and clear boundaries. Um, And I'm doing, I'm doing well. It's, it's amazing how much I always come back to this, the, the mind, right? It's, Whatever's, whatever crazy is going on in my world, in my environment, you know, unexpected events happening or whatnot, I always come back to the same place. I come back to my mind. The mind is, is what I own. The mind is what I control. And um, it's sort of that control filter that, that I have on processing the events that happen outside of me. So that's sort of how I feel at the moment. I love that. It's really, really, really good to hear. Yeah, awesome. Uh, thanks. And so, <clears throat> so, yeah, with this topic, yeah, can you give us an introduction on how, where this came about? So actually, um, me and you, Robert and I, we received an email from someone and she was asking um, how to achieve personal success and and how to um, sort of, I mean, I'm not looking at the question right now, so I, I don't know word for word, but pretty much to sum it up, she was asking how to achieve personal success and how to move forward in her life and, and how to be the best her that she can be. Um, so... I mean, yeah, we always tell you guys to send in questions. So here we are. We're doing an episode based on somebody's request. (laughs) Um, And then I figured I would bring in um, the concept of of like old identity and um, hanging on to an old identity um, and hanging on to something that's I guess, fantasized, that's not actually real, kind of like nostalgia. Um, You know, it's, you gotta, you gotta break up with your old self. You gotta, you gotta cut off the old identity. You gotta stop seeing yourself as the old identity, um, you know, so you can move forward and achieve personal success and, you know, um, I guess, be okay with change. Gotcha. Yeah, what you, what you said there, um, stood out to me is that there, I think that there is an old self and I feel like it's very common to bring that along with you. But here's how I look at it. I look at it as baggage, like a suitcase that you carry and it actually takes effort to hold on to the past. Whereas Mm -hmm. people think, oh, it's so hard to let go of the past. But if you're carrying heavy suitcases, emotionally, it's hard to let go. That's the key, that's that's it. Emotionally, it's hard to let go of the past. But if you let go, Properly, I think that the freedom experienced is more, uh, more than enough of a reward to uh, to keep you going in that direction. What do you think? I love 
what you said. Um, it takes effort to hold on to the past because personally, I believe that shit. I believe the fuck out of that shit because the past is so easy to let go of. We're legit not there. And if we stopped attaching ourselves to things and attaching ourselves to old imagined things i mean okay so i I saw a picture the other day and it was um it it was just or maybe i was listening to something and it was like the self is um the self is source so the self is you know your real self it's it's unproblematic right um but your imagined self, the the self that you have this idea of and you've habitually imagined this over and over and over again, you're going to have a, a really hard time letting go of the past. You're going to have a really hard time um, releasing the, the extremely tight hold you have on those emotions from your past. Um, because you felt them so deeply and that's that's great and everything you know don't cut off feeling but I think that what I'm trying to get at here is your old imagined self is your old imagined self she does not exist anymore unless you allow her to unless you see yourself as your old imagined self did you did you get anything from that yeah, definitely. I think that even yesterday, I mean, yeah, you and I are on such a similar wavelength. Um, and even yesterday, I was thinking about the word imagine and how the word image is such a, a big part of that word. Uh, mm -hmm. Image, and specifically, I think of it as image in the mind. So when you, when you are talking about this old imagined self, I'm thinking about, and you're saying it's not real. I'm thinking, you're right, it's just an image. Mm -hmm. It's just an image. And you can swap out images easily. Um, but the funny thing about the mind, and this is, I think this is huge. I think this is, in a way, um, one of the common threads throughout all of our episodes is that is this principle that where you put attention, then that's like energy. Uh, Tony Robbins says it better when he says where- Where attention goes, energy flows. Exactly, exactly. So, so the common dialogue that I have with clients who like want to change is that they start, the conversation starts with them saying, you know, I'm, I would like to be different. And, but then the conversation quickly goes to, you know, but, you know, I've just, I've always been this way. I've always been this, or, you know, I've always been not athletic or I've, I've always been introverted. That's a big one. I really recreated myself um, from a very introverted version to one that's, perhaps a bit more social and um and that took a lot of energy to to put to 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 do right but um but as people think more about their old self it kind of it adds and it invests more and more energy to it and then that's how images strengthen is imagination mm -hmm. is the process through which images become sharper and stronger, right? So you have to be careful what image is in your mind, right? Mm -hmm. I love that so much. And I feel like this topic kind of snuck up on us uh, without even knowing, because I feel like our flow right now, like we just, we're, we're in this, we're in this right now <laughs> to win it. Um, so, it's, you know how we were talking about wordplay and like all the words that you use, you know, they, they hold energy. Yeah. So the, the word image, it's, it's, it holds so much power to it 
and it holds such a specific energy, you know, and when you said that most of your clients um, say, you know, I've always been, okay, but if you actually take a look at that sentence, I've, I was in the past, okay, and Ben is in the past always is something that's continuous okay so if i've always been i don't know uh i'm trying to think of something that i've always been but that i that i really wanted to let go okay so i've always been a horrible listener my entire life i i don't give a fuck what you have to say please Bring me a champagne. I really don't care. Buy me something. <laughs> you know, so that's, you know, what I've always been, you know, but in the past years, maybe like the past, like, um, four or five years or something, you know, I've changed. And instead of, you know, saying to myself, oh, well, I've always been a horrible listener. I, you know, reframed it to, I always listen to people because, you know, I want to be listened to. And when I don't listen properly, there's actually no flow of conversation going on you're not connected to the person that you're talking to if, if you're not actually listening or closely understanding what they're um dealing with right so if i've always been is past past and continuous then can't we can't can't we change that around you know instead of i've always been blank you know it can be i can always be blank you know it, change it to the present um so that's, that's what I have to say right there. What's going on in your mind? Yeah, I would say the word that stands out to me is reframed. That you used mm. the word reframed in a, a very, mm. in a very casual way, but it's very, very important, I think. Uh, and it's something that I guess you did kind of naturally, right? Uh, unless you were working with some sort of coach who was teaching you how to reframe. I don't know if you, <laughs> it was, was it that or were you just, you just kind of just did it on your own naturally? I did everything on my own naturally. <laughs> right. So it's, it's a very important skill though. Um, mm. And mm. that's see, the reframing is the reason it, it's so effective is because that's the way out of the, focusing on the past right people think that if they say they don't want to be xyz then that's they don't see any problem with that because they're saying that they don't want to be xyz they don't want to be that old person right uh that stays in toxic relationships or whatever right you know but I, I see a huge major problem with that thought. And the reason that there is a problem with that thought is that it again invests more energy into the concept of X, Y, Z. Uh, you know, it invests more concept or it, it, sorry, it invests more energy into this concept of uh, that that, that, that that person stays in toxic relationships. So the question that you use to get out of that loop is, well, what would be the opposite? What would be the opposite? And so then the person says, well, I guess I would be in healthy relationships. And then you start to see their vibe, their vibe, their vibration change. Mm -hmm. right? and, okay, well, what, what would that look like to be in a healthy relationship? Well, I guess I would, uh, we would just have positive attitudes and, you know, we, we wouldn't put each other down. We would compliment each other, right? Um, see then, because it, they say, you know, we wouldn't put each other down, then you have to quickly invert that and say, uh, so then what would you do? And, you know, what's the opposite of putting each other down? Oh, it's uh, complimenting each other. We would, you know, compliment each other and you know, tell each other positive things. And, and as they're describing this, then you can see, you can witness in front of your eyes, they're raising their frequency. They're mm -hmm. raising their vibration. 
and it's almost magical, but it's, uh, but it's not magical. It's real. It's, and that's just the power of the mind because you take mm. the mind from one concept to, to a different one and you focus on that, you describe it, you make it rich. Um, what you're doing there is you're, you're painting more details onto that image, the image that is desired, the desired image rather than the undesired image. Mm -hmm. So people can complain all they want. Uh, they can say, you know, oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. And what they don't realize is that they have the paintbrush in their own hand, in their very own hand. As they're talking, as they're complaining, they're painting more details onto that image in the mind, so to speak, right? Um, and in their mind, they're painting more and more colors onto that image. And by doing that, it's causing them to feel, to, to vibrate at, a, at, at the same frequency as they're painting. I like that. I like that last part. I think that that had a lot of clarity. Um, vibrating at the same uh, frequency as your painting that you're painting. And um, so for personal success and being okay with change, um, you know, okay, so say you've been, say the old you was not very good in relationships because um, you've been, I guess you weren't really the best listener. Um, you didn't really open up. You didn't trust. Um, you were more concerned about the image of you two than you were concerned about the person um, himself. So say that this is what's happening, right? Okay, so then that identity, that's, that's, that's an identity. That's an image. That's, that's, that's an image. And you need to learn the skill of reframing. Cause I, I like what you said there, how, how reframing becomes a skill. I think that's really cool. Um, so you have to learn to reframe that. You have to learn to reframe your image. And I think that most people have such a hard time with that because they're, they're, mostly going to be like, oh, well, I'm going to change. How is everyone else going to react? Um, are they going to um, be angry with me? You know, something. And I remember I was watching this show, um, 13 Reasons Why. And I was so pissed off. It wasn't even funny because the, the boy, the one boy, he used to be an asshole. He used to be like a complete just jock douchebag. And then I don't know, something really bad happened in his life and he left home, so he got addicted to heroin. So he was a druggie for like a really long time. But he went to rehab and like he was trying to be a better person. He was, he didn't like who he was. He was trying to just be a better person. And all of his friends were like so fucking mean to him. And I wanted to break the fucking screen because they were like, how long until you slip up? And I'm like... I don't know what kind of fucking friends you have, but that's the rudest shit I've ever heard in my life, you know? So, like, you know, most people are so nervous of what other people are going to think of them. And when their energy of you, their their idea of you is kind of placed on you and you're changing it, it causes uncomfortability, uncomfortability around you everywhere. It's, like, surging with uncomfortability. Um, but, I mean, eventually, the more that you sort of seep into that new idea of yourself, the more power it gains and the more energy it gains, you know? So I think that the best advice for the question that came in, you know, for, for personal success and, um, you know, being okay with change, etc. I think that it's truthfully a matter of time and a matter of patience. You are not going to change overnight. You cannot if you break up with your your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever, of, of a year, you're not going to forget about them overnight. You're not going to find a new partner overnight. You, it takes a little bit of time. And the same goes for when you break up with your old self. You can't break up with your old self and change your identity overnight. It takes time. It takes patience. And it takes, you know, 
little 0.1% changes and, you know, eventually you're going to get there. Yeah, I think it's so true that um, people want to hold us to our old identities. And mm. I don't know why that's exactly, mm. Well, you, you're the one who said it. <laughs> <laughs> you reframed it. <laughs> um, you know, it was the example of the drug addict that is trying, right? He's becoming sober and then the friends, uh, the friends think that he's going to relapse. So, mm -hmm. so it's about, so, that, so here's how I think about that, right? When I think, when I hear that, this is me, 10 years experience in psychology, currently trying to bring physics into the picture. This is how I think about that situation. I think about it as an ecosystem. And just like how every single cell in your body is this tiny little factory with all of these organelles uh, inside of the cell, working together to keep the cell alive. At a larger level, we have society as a giant cell. And society has all these little pieces in it, which is you and me and everybody else. And those pieces have to work together for society to function, right? So we're almost like a giant cell. And so if one of those organelles wants to stop doing its job, that's a threat to the survival of the entire cell, the entire society, mm. right? Mm. The tribe right? And for many, many years in evolution, human beings evolved in tribes. They say, they say that uh, we stayed roughly at a number of 150 people in a tribe. And so Ooh. our brains, our brains have evolved to live in these societies of about 150 people. And part of that is we get some, we have this sense of a role of where we stand in, in the hierarchy, where we stand in the bigger picture, um, we understand these relations of, you know, so-and-so is my cousin, this is my uh, grandparent, this is my son, you know, this is, you know, this person that I report up to this person, the tribe leader, and there's all these, all these social dynamics that are part of our mind, right? It's sort of like the framework that we inherit from evolution. So if it's true that, um, that there's some sort of force keeping us into the current role that we're in, then there needs to be a bigger and stronger force to push us out of that role and into a new one. And I think one of the best ways is to move tribes, is to relocate into a new tribe. And this is what I did when I moved to California five years ago. In Chicago, I know a ton of people but they know my old identity. And so if I were to con continue talking to them and continue living in Chicago, it would be very difficult for me to change because all of the people around me v have a view of me in a certain way. Now, when I moved to California, I didn't know anybody here. And what does that mean in terms of identity? That's a golden opportunity because now I can walk up to someone brand new I can present my new identity. Oh, I'm an outgoing person. Uh, I'm not, yeah. not so introverted, right? I'm, I'm this and that. And they start to view me that way. They, they start to think, oh, Robert is, you know, he's really outgoing. And that is a very, very powerful force. Uh, and this is now, this is mm -hmm. understand, using principles of psychology, real psychology, to achieve what you want to achieve. There, there are these forces. I'm not going to... I'm not going to try um, to go up against gravity, right? I'm not going to try to defeat gravity and make it stop working anymore. But mm -hmm. you know what? I will find ways to overcome gravity, right? So these, there's these psychological forces, just like gravity, that, you know, that pull us to, into these certain roles. And I'm not going to go against that. I'm going to figure out what's a good workaround. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to use it to my advantage. So by using it to your advantage, you find a way to get into this new role where people around you see you in this new light. And then, and then it just, it, it keeps going from there. Um, you follow me? I am. Um, yeah. The momentum builds and I feel like some people, you know, would feel 
I guess a little, I don't know, like the, the saying that you can't run from yourself. So people like, oh, they're like, well, moving states isn't going to do anything because I would just be running from myself. But in actuality, I think it's all about also what you think about what you're doing, what you think about what you're thinking, what you think about who you are, you know? So you, if you're moving to another state, you're not running from anything. You are actually on a mission to create. But if you go to the other state and you act as you've always acted, then you're trying to run and you can't run from yourself. You are who you are. You are who you choose to be. So if you move a state and you don't change a thing, you're still there. Guess what? Knock, knock, knock. Who you are is still there. And if you don't change, then then your life won't change, you know? But if you're moving states and you decide to act different, people are going to have a different perspective on you, of you and you're not running from yourself, you're recreating yourself. And as you're recreating yourself, you're, you know, creating this life for yourself where if you were to show up to your old place of living with a few of your friends, you know, your old friends, the people who thought they knew you would be like, holy fuck she changed or he changed, you know? And um, when you have those, those people sort of behind you that know the real you, like who you are now, who you have recreated yourself to be, that it's, you feel a lot more confident because that energy really does have a large influence on who we are. I mean, when, I think we talked about this, but it's, it's a great spot to hit. You know, when I, when I get on a call with Robert Nelson, I expect him to be cool, calm, collected and have, you know, a funny sense of humor. I expect him to look nice with his hair good and everything. You know, I expect him to, to blow my mind with some good stuff. That's, you know, that's the energy that I bring to you when we get on a call, you know, so that, that energy, it has a large influence on, on who you are and, and, you know, I guess your, 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 your idea of the freedom that you have, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think I'm, I'm, um, you know, I'm right step, uh, what is it called? Uh, in stride. I'm right in stride with you, you know? <laughs> to use a walking metaphor um another thing to mention is when i moved to california and you, you probably don't know this about me i changed my name a nickname what? it was a nickname not legally oh okay in chicago from birth to all the way when i was 27 i think is when i moved people called me bobby bobby Yep. And when I moved to California five years ago, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go by Robert. That was another way that I was able to create a brand new identity. Because think of how much energy is connected to that word Bobby, to that label. That's, that's what I was called when I was five years old. I don't want to be my five-year-old self. I don't want to uh, you know what I mean? I don't want to have the, the emotional set uh, that I had at five. I don't want to have the, uh, you know, the emotional immaturity that I had at five. I want to be, I want, you know what I mean? I want to be a, a full grown up. And, and with all this the more that I study energy these days, the more that I wonder, you know, how much energy really is kind of tied to a name. It's, I think that there's a lot of energy tied to a name because I completely feel that. I feel like people who have no idea what I'm up to now, um, and you'll honestly probably be able to feel this through the phone, like people who I, I guess, like maybe I knew in high school and they had a specific idea of me, you know, maybe I walk into a room and somebody would be like, who's that? And they'd be like, oh, it's Kira. You know, that's, that's Kira, you know, but like people who know me now, they'd be like, oh, I'm going to bring my friend Kira, you know? So they, they both have completely different 
frequencies to them and, and completely different energies. Um, and I think it's funny that you changed your name. Well, you know, decided to start being called something else because I did that at one point too. Um, I went by my middle name, Dawn, because I just didn't, I just, I, I didn't want to be who I was. Um, and when I accidentally joined that cult that I was telling you about, um, they used to call me Dawn. And honestly, you know what? I am so happy that I changed my name at that time. <laughs> so that way Kira has no, no real energetic connection to that because that was Dawn. <laughs> That was that was Dawn over there, you know. This is a good point. Uh, okay. Speaking of, you know, I guess cults. Uh, it, it makes it makes me remember. <laughs> is that water smell funny? <laughs> I just my my friend was over yesterday, and I don't know if it was hers or mine. And <laughs> um, so the fact that you you brought up cults, right? It reminds mm -hmm. me that psychological forces can always be used um, for good or for bad. It depends how they're used. Just like a knife uh, can be used by a surgeon to save someone's life, but can be used by a thug or a murderer to take someone's life. Uh, yeah. So when it comes to psychology, there's people out there who seek to manipulate others. Mm. Mm. And one way that they can do that is by um giving you a new identity giving you a new mm. name right i i know of uh <laughs> someone who gives gives these nicknames to people right and mm. it's and, and it's kind of in a manipulating way right because then that person if they don't if they're not prepared if they don't understand the psychology behind it then they will start to conform to that new mm. image or that new role that the person gave them and this is yes. this is a way to defend against narcissists and um but it's not just narcissists but it's the dark triad uh the three traits that are really the most disturbing among the humans which is uh narcissism machiavellianism and psychopathy um mm. all three of which kind of share this um this um central um idea of of you know of manipulating people or hurting them and not not being concerned about them right just kind of using mm -hmm. them, you know yeah, yeah sort of using them so so we have to on the one hand be very acutely aware of when other people might try to tie us to an identity um so yeah that, so that we don't get manipulated but at the same time, that's just a small piece of it. I think the bigger piece that we need to pay more attention to is, is using that of our own free will to drive ourselves in the direction that we want to drive ourselves. So that would be creating a new nickname for yourself uh, rather than someone else creating it for you. Or, you know, getting a new group of friends or something and, uh, versus... You, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I do. We have to, people think of it so negatively. Think, people think of psychology and this maybe, I think this is like just cynicism, widespread cynicism, but people think of like, uh, there's a big study called the Stanford Prison Experiment um, where long, long time ago, many, many years ago, because they can't get away with this today but they did a psychology study at Stanford University where they had college students uh, randomly assigned to either be like a, a, a prisoner in this pretend jail or- Oh my God. You know about this, right? They were either a prisoner or they were a prison guard and they had to shut it down after a couple of days because it got so out of hand because the people started playing the roles like to an extreme, like the prison guards yeah. were getting abusive. Like it was really bad. But that shows you how powerful this force is. The force of identity, just like the force of gravity. These are the laws of psychology and they behave. They're just as strong as the laws of physics. So we need to understand how they work so that we don't, don't walk around blindly, uh, just 
completely unaware of what's going on in our mind. This is the Enter the Mind podcast. Enter the freaking mind already and see what's going <laughs> on because this is exactly what's going on. God, I love this so much. First of all, have you ever seen that movie with Adrian Brody? The uh, experiment? Wait, I know who that is, but he was in a movie about that experiment? Yes, and it's called The Experiment. It's one of the best movies I've ever seen. And the prison guards, like, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, so on top of that, earlier you were talking about, you know, you can't go against the laws of gravity, right? But you can work with the laws of gravity, right? Okay, so you can't go against the laws of nature. They are the laws of nature. Like, it's the law of fucking nature. You it's cannot there. go against it. So you might as well make it your buddy. You might as well hang out with it for a bit, get to know it. And even if you don't fucking like it, you better, you better get with it. Because that is not only going to help you change your identity, it's going to help you uh, feel more okay with change. It's going to help you push yourself into a new identity. Um, it's going to help you move on from the past. It's going to help you attract who you actually want in your life and people who can help you be who you want to be. So, you know, we can't go against the laws of nature and gravity being one of the laws of nature. We can't, we can't go against it. So we might as well just go on ahead in there and, and just, just get with it. And the thing about, you know, taking, taking your role very seriously, okay, well, if you, if you really want to do something extreme, go to fucking, go to, go to Georgia, I don't know, go somewhere you've never been before, have yourself a, a specific set of wardrobe, have a specific set of vocabulary that you want to use, and you show up as whoever the fuck you want to play. What role are you playing? Okay, what, 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 what fucking, what video game character are you? Who the fuck are you when you go to this new place? And act like that for a week. And you tell me, you know, you tell me what the result of that is. People are taking you seriously, right? People are treating you different, right? Uh, you're, you're attracting different things, right? Right? Okay, so who's to say that you can't start over and be whoever the fuck you want to be? You get treated how you fucking act. Boom, bam. <laughs> right on. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> I'll give my concluding thoughts now. It's, uh, you're right. It's, it's very fluid. It's, and I, I think you expressed it very well, uh, very accurately, that, um, that this thing of identity is not as fixed as we think it is. Um, mm. There's, um, there's a growth, oh, sorry, there's a, there's a book called, uh, I think it's called Growth Mindset, or at least the concept is called Growth Mindset by Carol Dweck, that um, explains how, you know, people can either think that they, they can't learn something or they can learn it. But uh, the interesting thing is that the more you think you can learn things, the more you actually do learn things it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy and mm -hmm. I, think, I think the same applies with identity kind of like you said um the more you think that you have a fixed identity the more you're going to have one and the more that you think this thing is fluid mm -hmm. I, can, I can go anywhere then i think the, the more you'll you'll mm -hmm. like that what uh what do you got to say <laughs> i'm gonna i'm just gonna leave it at that that was that was amazing. That was really really good. I think that's you know a really really great point. Um, so yeah, then my my concluding thoughts would be thank you as always um, for listening and head over to my Instagram page at try tragedy because there's a really really big deal going on right now and it ends on December thirty first. Yeah, uh, yeah, ditto that. Uh... People should go straight over to the Instagram. Uh, and my Instagram is existence first, all one word. Let's stay in touch, everybody, so that, uh, and send us more questions. Thank you to whoever wrote that question in. And uh, yeah, tune in next week for another, uh, another adventure into the mind, the truth, the reality of the mind.